<laughs> it's kind of funny how that happens. But if you ask the right question in almost any group that goes contrary to what the group think is, they will see you almost as an enemy. They will not like you one little bit. On the other hand, if you sit there just quiet, they'll treat you with utmost respect as if you're, you're, you're one of them. But next time you go to um, a meeting or anything that's where ideas are presented contrary to the way you think, you don't need to be obnoxious. Just ask a question that demands an answer that makes them think out of the box. If you ask a question that makes the other guy think out of the box, uh, it's going to upset their apple cart. And they won't like you, and they will not really understand why they don't like you. They just will not like you. They'll, they'll just pick up that you're not in with their group thought. Now, when the politician goes to Washington, all of a sudden he discovers their group thinking is different than us. He goes there and discovers this, and he has a choice. He can either go along with it, or he can buck the system. If he bucks the system and all of a sudden appears as an outsider, because when you go against group think, automatically the people in the group, they just will not like you. And what's one of the biggest desires of all of us? One of our biggest desires is to be liked. That's why the book How to Win Friends and Influence People has been a bestseller for, what, several generations. It's still a I would still, many people still read that book. And it's because people want to be liked. People want to be liked. Maybe that's, uh, for many people, that's their strongest desire. And so when the politician goes to Washington and he tunes in, he psychically tunes in, he, he's not aware he's a psychic here, but he is. He's psychically tuning in to the group think, and suddenly he, he has a choice. Do I go along with it? Or do I buck the system and make everybody dislike me? Because he picks up, he will be disliked if he goes against the group think. So he has this choice. Do I want to be liked or not? Well, of course I want to be liked. You know, if I'm not liked, I won't be able to get anything done here. That's kind of way he rationalizes it. So I want to get some things done. So I'm going to go along with this group think. Now, these aren't the actual words he's thinking, but this is kind of the direction his thinking is taking him. And so he, he, he doesn't buck the system. And then when it comes down to choices between representing us back home or, going, or pleasing the people in his new group, of which he is a, kind of an esoteric member, he, who, who does he go with? He goes with the beltway rather than the people back home. He forgets about us until he comes back home. And then when he comes back home, he's not associated with the Washington group think anymore. He's not, he's not tuning into it anymore. Instead, he's now tuning into us, and now I sound like a good old boy, sound like he's one of us, but he's only one of us when he's here. And when he's here, he's not voting. He's only talking to us. When he goes back, and makes that all-important vote. Which group think is he tuning into? Is he tuning in to us and what we want? No, he's tuning in to what the people in Washington want, not what the people back home sent him there, sent him there to, uh, to do to begin with. Now, there's a number of things that uh, influence the politician. I'll, I'll cover really briefly the seven points we did last time. One is the polls. He's influenced by the polls. The second, by different political groups, action groups, and so on. They uh, raise money for him. And the third is the lobbyists and corporations. They have a powerful influence on him. The third, he will trade his votes with other politicians. And the fourth, is just downright ignorance. He doesn't have time to read a 2,500-page bill. He has no idea what's in it except what people have told him. Somebody told him it's a good thing, so he decided to vote for it. He had no idea, doesn't have a clue as to 90% of what's in it. The sixth is party leaders, 
the party leaders take him, twist his arm, and say, you need to vote this way. And the eighth, and this is a new one, is the group think. Inside the Beltway, the group think is a very powerful force that forces him to conform and play games with these other seven points. The ninth, and this is an important one, is we have allowed our representatives and senators and even the president to be elected with the wrong job description. When you apply for a job and you're hired by somebody, somebody brings you in and says, okay, now this is your job. This is your job description. You know, you're an engineer or whatever, you're a cameraman, you're a producer, this is what your job is. If I were to ask you, what is the job description of our representatives, what would you say? Nine out of ten people would say, well, their job description is to represent us. But that is not what they see as their job description. What do you think they see as their true job description? Let me give you a clue. It is not being our representative. It is not representing the people back home. That is not their job description. I bet you if I gave everybody listening three months to figure the answer to this, no one would come up with the answer. But when I tell you the answer, you'll realize that it's the right answer because it makes sense. They think, and they don't think this consciously, but subconsciously, and what motivates them is they see their job description is to spend our money. And the great part about spending our money is they have a blank check. They have a credit card with no limit on it. Now let's suppose you have a teenage son. And you bring him in and you say to him, here's a credit card, son. It has no limit on it. You know, you could even go spend a trillion dollars if you saw something that was that important. But I trust you, son. I trust you with this credit card that you will just spend you will just spend what is essential. How much time left? So we're going to continue this next time. What we're going to spend, what we would do if, what our kid would do if he, if he had a blank check. And so we'll continue this next time and we have some interesting things to say. Thanks. Thank you.